We live in a century that witnessed some of the world's most greatest achievements. The rise of AI and its enormous applications from speech sensitive systems like Siri to autonomous vehicles. Yet, some of the world's most debilitating diseases like Alzheimer's, cancer, cardiovascular, diabetes, and so on, are still threatening millions of lives. Today, I want to talk, I want to, talk to you about my journey for, for, to, to curing diseases from academia to the industry, and why I believe we live in a very special century, very special moment in life that will probably change the world as we see it. I started my academic career as a computer science engineer back in Syria. I got hooked into AI, and I decided to pursue a career in that field that I believed will change the world. I moved to Belgium after I enrolled in a master in AI, and I fall in love with systems that can be adapted, that can, that can learn from, what, from the history of interactions and adapt whatever, it, whatever is gonna come next based on that interaction. Computer games was a fascinating testbed for me. I ended up applying for a PhD in computer games at one of the leading centers in Europe at IT University in Copenhagen. And I moved from Belgium to Denmark to pursue that career. That was the beginning of my journey that lasted for about nine years. I had established for myself a successful career as, as an academic. I published tens of papers covering a wide range of topics from adaptive systems to artificial intelligence to machine learning to systems that are adaptable to learning from less from small amount of data and so on and so forth. I had co-authored a book on the subject and I was pioneering the area of adaptive system for computer games. Everything was great until it was not. I still remember that day when I get a call from my sister telling me that my mother is suffering from lung cancer. She, had, she was already in a very advanced state that limited her treatment options to chemotherapy and her survival rates were very low. Going through such times makes one realize, her, reconsider her options and value time differently. By that, by that time, I have accumulated about 12, year, 12 years of experience in academia doing AI and machine learning. But I knew next to nothing about how to reduce my, my, my experience, my knowledge to practice and apply it in a way that can be impactful. Moving into the industry sounded like a reasonable option. I started looking into how, into how I could go about finding an idea and starting a business. I knew, I knew nothing about how to do that back in academia. So I, so I started looking for startup accelerators that I can join that could help me find a co-founder, find an idea, and find the application. I moved, I decided to, to quit my assistant professorship at Aalborg University in Copenhagen in Denmark and moved to London. I joined Entrepreneur First and that started my journey with GTN. I generally like to define luck as being in the right place at the right time. You would be probably lucky if that happens to you once. I consider myself triple lucky. In that program, I teamed up with a quantum physicist who were also looking for ways to apply his knowledge to the, to the real world. Together, we started looking at the overlap between AI and quantum physics. We quickly realized that we're very fortunate to land on such an area. We realized that we're living in a century where two of the most greatest achievements of all, of all time are just coming together. For centuries, the world's most greatest mind have been looking into quantum physics. They've been working on beautiful equations that governs our understanding of the, of the smallest particles of atoms to the largest scale of the universe. In a parallel universe, machine learning scientists were looking into ways to train machine learning models to learn about the world so that they can surpass or, or at least achieve human accuracy. Only within the past few years, they managed to, to achieve a breakthrough with methods that are able to achieve human or surpass human accuracy in, in image classifications, opening up wide range of applications for diagnostics, personalized medicine, and treatment. It was only in 2017 where quantum physics and machine learning started to come together, and this overlap was still very much in its infancy. 
together with my co-founder, possessing the necessary expertise to understand, critique, and analyze technical challenges and opportunities. We identified a set of methods, novel ideas, where we can bring these two fields together. But again, we were struggling to find the right application. We spent weeks talking to different people from different backgrounds. And again, it was due to pure luck when in one of our conversations, in the very, very late, like last minutes, that person ended up talking about a paper by one of the biggest top 10 pharmaceutical companies trying to apply machine learning to drug discovery. <coughs> Reading that paper was our eureka moment. Going through the research and trying to identify the gaps, we immediately realized that the technology we had in our hands can, prov can provide a paradigm shift in traditional ways of doing drug discovery. We were indeed frustrated to learn that at the moment, it takes about 15 years to bring drug to market and it cost about $3 billion. We were frankly even more frustrated and shocked to realize that even the world's largest billion dollar, trillion dollar actually, pharmaceutical companies won't be able to afford, to afford doing drug discovery in 2025. The field was undoubtedly screaming for innovation. For me, this realization that I can apply my knowledge and expertise that I have gathered through the years to be as impactful as saving lives was kind of a dream coming true. So let me tell you a little bit about traditional way of doing drug discovery. For centuries, people have been looking for drugs in a pool of chemicals that we have observed and recorded as human. While we have almost registered 100 million of chemicals, these libraries are still just a tiny fraction of the drug-like space. Those are actually drugs that can actually solve some of the world's long-lasting diseases. We know that there is a space of 10 to the power 60 such chemicals out there. We simply don't have the means or the ways to access and find something that could actually cure disease in that space. Such space has been pretty much neglected over the years because we are we human and we are biased with our conventional ways of thinking about how a chemical structure should look like. This, however, can be partially resolved by the recent advancement in machine learning and the existence of models that can be creative. In the field of image processing, a class of machine learning <coughs> called deep generative adversarial networks has recently showed very promising results in fooling us human. These are some examples of images that, was created by, that were created by machines. Some of them are real, but you would agree with me that those are very hard to differentiate. Now, one would argue that such methods, such tools, should work for drug discovery if they were to train on chemical structures. That's actually true, but there is a catch. This class of methods only work when they fed with as much information as possible. In this case, they were fed with pure images, pixels of images. They're very good in, in picking up hidden association between the cause and the effects, so in this case, they will pick up the hidden association between how the image looks like and what is in the image. Now let's talk about the analogy between this and drug discovery. Traditionally, chemicals have been thought of as this. This is the representation of penicillin. And it's the form that's currently used to train machine learning models. One can easily see that this is very simplistic representation. It's hardly enough, there's hardly enough information in this representation to train machine learning models and to tell a good drug from a bad one. And that's mainly because chemicals are something like this. There's quantum physics behind the scene. There's entanglement properties, there are electronic orbitals, there's an the cloud, and there's all those properties that determine the function, the shape, and the properties of that chemical. One would argue that training machine learning on drug discovery is hard enough, let alone training it or feeding it with such a complex high dimensional object such as this, this one here. That is a challenge that we are addressing at GTM. We are developing methods to capture the true nature of chemicals and at the same time finding ways so that we can look at the right areas in the chemical space. 
So for instance, if you're looking at CNS diseases or drugs that can enter the brain past the, the blood brain barrier, then, then you will have methods that can filter out the, the drugs that will allow you to do that. So what would such method do for drug discovery? First of all, and probably, probably most importantly, we will be able to tap into new areas of the clinical space that we human haven't thought of. Drugs that would solve some of the long-lasting diseases. Once we access that astronomically huge search space, we we'll use another class of machine learning models that will help us filter and prioritize and get access to the area of that space that, that are relevant for specific diseases. This is a complex piece of technology and it requires the right team and the right expertise. Most importantly, it requires a multidisciplinary team that can work very effectively together to be able to innovate, focus our effort on what matters, and make an impact. Within the last two years, we have built such an incredible team with people who are not just excited about the technology, but also driven by its impact. We also have, have been joined by some of the world's greatest minds in quantum physics, machine learning, and drug discovery hunters who are helping us achieve that journey and establish the building blocks for a leap in drug discovery. We have built our first version of the platform and we have already achieved up to 30% increase in, in accuracy in, prediction some of, in predicting some of the chemical properties. We are expecting to run the drug discovery process on a fraction of the cost and time within the next year. <coughs> so far, with access to enough data on a cancer target, we've demonstrated that our models can come up with some, co some commercially viable chemicals for that target in less than a week by one, by one person working on the project at zero, almost zero cost. Traditionally, this same process would have taken a year, cost about a million dollars, and would have needed about 500,000 chemicals to be sensitized and tested. It's quite unfortunate that many of us had to, had to lose their loved ones. It requires a paradigm shift in the conventional ways of thinking to arrive on new innovations. And I believe GTN is at the forefront to deliver a leap in drug discovery so that we can all live a happier, healthier life. Thank you. <laughs>